before we have heard that with the pension members, uh, both pension and compression members are under actually loaded members. Uh, so all steel sections experiencing compression must comply with the requirements set by the succeeding provisions of compression members. Okay. So actually, uh, let's say I have this cross section. So let's say I have a white line section. So to get for the capacity of this cross section under compression, so we need to compute for the maximum force that it took care before this member buckles. Okay. So buckling is the sideward or the sidewise movement of any compression member. And upon buckling, uh, of course, the member will be leading to its failure. So the concept here under compression member is to find out what would be that critical force that will tend this member to buckle. And everything started from the theory set by Euler. Okay, so it's Euler. Okay, so according to Euler, um, the critical load that any compression member could resist would is given by this equation, pi square EI over L squared. So looking at this equation, uh, basically the numerator of the equation is a constant, pi square is a constant, E is the modulus of elasticity of the member, so for our case, we will be dealing with steel, therefore it is 200,000 megapascals. Then, um, uh, so most likely, the critical load is uh, dependent on the inertia height, then inversely proportional to the square of its length. Okay, so if this is Euler's critical load, we could express also this one into Euler's critical stress. This is load, this is stress. And stress is defined as force all over area. If this is Euler's critical stress, it follows that this should be an Euler's critical load. So substituting this Euler's critical load from this equation, this will be due to pi squared di okay, um, over L squared, then divided by the area. Okay. Now, what is this I over E? As I have told you before, the most important property for a compression member is the radius of aeration. Right? Uh, radius of aeration is defined as the square root of I divided by area. Uh, so this could be written as R squared is equal to I over A. So if I will be replacing this I over A with this R squared, my Euler's critical stress will become pi squared E then uh, over L squared, then this I over A will be replaced with this R squared. Okay, so further for this to be written as Euler's critical stress will be pi squared E divided by L divided by R. Both of them are squared. So this will be our Euler's critical stress. As you can see from this equation, the numerator is a constant, pi squared E. Then uh, the denominator is the square of the L over R. So the strength or the stress on the compression member entirely depends on the ratio of L over R. That L over R ratio is known as the slenderness ratio. Okay, so slenderness ratio or the SR. Okay, now. What can you say about the strength or the stress of a compression member as a function of its slenderness ratio? What if we have larger slenderness ratio? What can you say about its strength or stress? The larger this, the S R, the smaller, right? So the smaller it would be its capacity. So how would you describe slender elements or slender member? So let's say for this case, I have this cross-section. How would you describe a slender member? Slender means uh, long, long, uh, longer, longer, longer na thin broken cross-section. Right? So the longer the section, the thinner the cross-section, the smaller the cross-section, the, uh, the larger the slenderness ratio. 
and definitely it would pop LTC. Okay. Now, so again, so the span of any compression member depends on the square of its tenderness ratio. So for the rest of our discussion, it would be focused on slenderness ratio, determining of slenderness ratio. But this L, let's say for this compression member, let's say I have this member, uh, the Euler's theory is based from the assumption that the member is assumed to be hinged at both ends. So this would be the critical load. Okay? Now, what if we vary the condition of supports? Let's say I'll change the support from inch into a fixed support. Uh, so what if I'll uh, make this free end? So what would be the variations in the Euler stress? So instead of L over R, uh, the equation will now become pi square E. Let me introduce to you the K. The K times L over R. Where in this K is known as the effective length factor. So if I multiply the, the original length with an effective length factor, the product is known as the effective length. What is that effective length? This length approximates the length over which um, the column actually buckles, and this may be shorter or longer than the actual increase length. So it may be greater if k is uh, greater than 1, and if it would be smaller or shorter if our k value is less than 1. So the question is, what are the values of k? So I have here the, these are the theoretical k values for, for varying conditions of supports as well with the recommended design values. Okay, so comparing the theoretical and the recommended design values, um, design values are, are relatively larger compared to the theoretical values because of course, when, whenever we are designing, uh, we, we want to have more conservative analysis or even design. So that's why these are relatively greater. But uh, in the board exam, unless otherwise it was uh, it is specified, and even during our exams, we will be adopting the theoretical key values. Okay. Now, so what do you mean by that uh, effective length factors? Let's say for this case that I have a both end hinge. As you can see, for both end hinge, this one, okay, the key value is equal to one. What does it mean by that one? So if you uh, apply a compressive force there. Since the, the supports are hinges or pin, as we all know, whenever it is pin, uh, there will be no translation, but there will be a rotation. Yeah? So, if there will be a rotation at these joints, the buckle shape of this member will be something like this. So, with this buckle shape, as you can see, if this would be the overall length or the actual length of the member, the question is, how much of that total length experiences buckling? How much of the total length experiences buckling? In terms of percentage. 100%, diba? All throughout of its length experiences buckling. 100% means 1. That's why it's 1. What about for the case of, let's say, both ends fixed? For both ends fixed, Okay. So let's say I have this uh, compression member, then I apply a critical load. So how will this bucket? Okay. So knowing the condition for hinge, that uh, for hinge or I'm oh, sorry for fixed support, there will be no translation, neither uh, rotation. So the buckle shape of this member would be something like this. So can you see this one? So the question is, how much of the total length experiences buckling? If this would be again the total length, L, how much of the total length experiences buckling? But the buckling uh, starts here and somewhere here. According to the code, that would be only 50% of the total length. 50% means 0.5 of K. So same thing with the rest of the other conditions, support conditions, let's say for uh, fixed hinge 
uh, supports there will be only 70% buckle shape. And for this case, whenever you see this uh, square and at the joint, this uh, represents that the joint can translate sidewise, but uh, the joint doesn't uh, rotate. Whereas, uh, whenever you see this symbol, you know, circle at the end of the joint or off of the member, uh, that only represents that the joint can translate at the same time it could uh, rotate. So this would be an idealization for a flagpole type of member. Let's say it's a fixed at the base, then it could uh, translate and rotate at the other end. So for that case, the effective end factor is equal to 2. The larger the k value, what can you say about the strength? The oiler stress? The larger the k, the smaller, the weaker the section would be. Okay, as a function of the k. Okay, so that would be the oiler spectral uh, stress. Now, our objective from, uh, from this discussion is to come up with the capacity. Okay, so capacity of compression member, uh, which is uh, capital F A. So this is the capacity. Okay, so we, we just need to compare the actual. So again, I am using small letter for actual stress, then capital letter for allowable. Okay, so if, if this would be the actual, so the actual should be less than or equal to the capacity to make it uh, to make it safe. So what is actual? Actual would be the compressive force divided by its cross-sectional area and that should be less than or equal to the capacity. So if you want to solve for the capacity P, that could be solved by multiplying the capacity FA with its cross-sectional area. So this is whenever we analyze, whenever we want to solve for its uh, capacity 